That is on do not disturb. Great. Great, great, great. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and thank you very much for tuning in to today's video which is kind of a follow on from last week's video. So last week I touched on or discussed some of the things which I'm really looking forward to wearing come the autumn season and today I'm going to be going through five trends that I will not be wearing for autumn winter 2021. Right, let's start off with the first trend which is logos. Logos everywhere, logo mania. So logos this season have been seen at Fendi, Chanel, Gucci, but there's no surprise there, Loewe, Versace, Balmain and Max Mara, just to name a few. So the logo trend is definitely a trend which has been seen previously, in previous years, in previous decades. The 90s was a big time for logos and everything logo mania. However, I feel like the logo trend really coming into fruition for this season has been building momentum slowly over the last few years and it's been sort of growing and growing and growing and there's been a big resurgence of like the 90s trend in general and I think it's kind of reaching its peak. Now you might have seen in some of my previous videos, especially over the last year to sort of two years, that my love of a logo is fading very fast to the point where I've actually sold a lot of my logo heavy bags. So I've sold all my Gucci now, they have all gone, anything with any kind of monogramming. I recently sold my vintage Fendi Baguette Mama bag, which had the Fendi monogram logo all over that. And I am very seriously considering selling my Louis Vuitton, vintage Louis Vuitton croissant bag. And I think, as again I've referenced in previous videos, you guys know of my love of Celine bags, which have got very, very minimal branding on them. And I just think that perhaps my priorities have maybe changed a bit. I can't really put sort of a finger on it and tell you why exactly my love of logos has faded so much. It's just more of a sort of gradual change. I could say that it maybe potentially is the pandemic and you know, people's priorities in general have changed. For me, I think it's more of a style element in that the logo and knowing where a specific item is from and having that very much in your face is not as important to me now as it used to be. I will fully hold my hands up and admit in my 20s, if I was gonna spend a lot of money on a handbag, I would have wanted it to have a loudspeaker saying, I am very expensive. You know, I would have wanted it to have said, I am this brand. Because when you're spending that much money, this is like thousands of pounds on handbags. I can understand why, you know, people want to have logos everywhere and I get it. And I think part of it is sort of a status symbol and I'm not throwing any shade. I just do not want to throw any shade at anyone that loves a logo. It is all, as I always say, personal preference. But just for me, I feel like the logo is just dead. No, that was too much. <laughs> But now I think it is safe to say that this trend is not for me. Trend number two. This will be absolutely no surprise. I don't think I'll have to give a reason why this is not my cup of tea and why I won't be wearing this, but it is bold and bright. So this season, this trend has been seen at Versace, Prada, Bottega, Chanel, Ferragamo, and many, many more. Now, yeah, I think this is a pretty obvious no for me. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I have a massive love of black, white, neutrals. I'll go so far as to wear a bit of blue, you know, blue jeans, a blue shirt. I'll wear a bit of pale yellow in summer, but I am not, very not about bold, and bright colours. I have been there, I have done it, I loved it at the time, but now I just would not feel comfortable in any way, shape or form if I was wearing a bold and bright coloured outfit. 
And again, no shade at all to anyone that loves colour. I think it is great if you love colour and you embrace it and you feel awesome wearing colour, like it makes you feel super confident. I love that. I actually follow a lot of other fellow creators who are not my style at all, but they wear really bold, colours, they wear prints, they wear sort of clashing colours and prints and although I don't personally get any outfit inspiration from that, I just admire and can appreciate how the colours kind of, you can almost see how it makes them feel, like it, it just sort of shines out of their outfit and I can fully appreciate when people love to wear colour. It's just not my cup of tea at all. Moving on to trend number three, and it is florals. Florals. So this trend this season has been seen at Acne Studios Erdem, which is no surprise, and Ulla Johnson, just to name a few. Now, when we're talking about florals for this season, it's very much been referenced that this is not spring pretty delicate florals. This is like chintz and antique florals, the sort of thing that you would see like draped and adorning some sort of rustic four poster bed in like some, you know, dark and antique countryside manor. You know, it's that kind of really vintage sort of tapestry style floral that we're looking at for this season. Now I'm not totally against a floral despite my dislike towards prints in general, aside from stripes obviously. Um, yeah, I'm not adverse to a floral in spring or even florals when it comes to occasion wear. So like the H&M Brock collection dress that I spoke about a couple of months ago, I wore that one to a wedding. So I'm not totally opposed to florals. But for me, there's a time, a place and a season for them. And yeah, for me personally, it's just not winter. Moving on to trend number four, and it is sparkle. And this is the worst, <laughs> it literally makes my skin crawl. I'll tell you why, I have a very good reason why. But yes, sparkle. So this trend this season has been seen at Burberry, Loewe, Stella McCartney, Louis Vuitton and many more. Now, it is inevitable that sparkle will always, guaranteed every single year, be a trend or be deemed as a trend for an autumn winter season because we have the festive period which is housed in winter. We've got Christmas, so basically the entire month of December and New Year's Eve. They're all about sparkle. Naturally, it's about party time and glitter and going out and having works do's and family do's and just parties in general. And I think that is predominantly the time of year where you would see sparkle of all varieties. Now, in my younger years, I loved a bit of sparkle, you know, my early 20s, I went out, I went out, out to the club, <laughs> to the club, oh, those were the days, I went out, out, and I wore all the sparkle, um, do we need to show the picture of the sequin knickers again, for anyone that hasn't seen it, we will pop it on screen now, thank you Simon, yes, I at some stage in my life wore sequin knickers, that is a time I care to forget. <laughs> but since turning 30, definitely since turning 30, I have not worn a single piece of sparkle, with the exception of a bridesmaid's dress, which I was forced to wear. It was not my choice, but that had a sequin top half to it. <sighs> Now the reason that I have such a strong dislike towards sparkle is because I actually don't find fabrics that have sparkle on them and we're talking beads, gemstones, sequins or like just stuck on glitter, lurex thread woven in. I do not find these kind of fabrics comfortable in any way. I find them heavy itchy, scratchy, elasticated, no, it just, it, it, 
it makes me feel really uncomfortable just talking about sparkle which is so weird because I used to wear so much in my early in my in my early years in my toddler years in my 20s I used to wear so much sparkle but the thought of putting those fabrics on my skin just makes me want to itch and also they are probably the messiest garments of clothing to wear. You literally shed sequins and beads and gemstones and leave a trail of glitter in your wake whenever you wear these kind of garments. And I don't know if there's anyone else out there that feels the same as me, but I am such a clean freak and I actually, one of my biggest pet peeves is receiving cards, whether it be birthday cards or Christmas cards, any kind of greeting cards that have glitter on them. And you open the cards and then there's just glitter everywhere. And it's really difficult to hoover up because it sticks to stuff and then you touch it and it moves somewhere else. Well, I feel the exact same way about clothing with any kind of sparkle on it. Aside from the fact that I just don't go out. I don't go out to the kind of places where glitter and sparkle would be appropriate. I hate parties. I'm probably one of the most antisocial people on the planet. <laughs> so yeah, sparkle, glitter, gemstones, rhinestones, lurex, you name it. No, dog hair is my glitter. Speaking of dog hair, that segues nicely into trend number five, my fifth and final trend, which I will not be wearing for autumn winter 2021. And it is furry and fuzzy. So this trend has been seen at Burberry, Acne Studios, Chanel, and again, many, many more. So I feel like in the same kind of way as sparkle, the furry trend is once again another trend that's always going to rear its head come autumn winter season. It's just one of those trends along with like chunky knits, which, you know, we end up calling trends, but they're not trends. It's just the sort of clothing that you end up whipping out come the autumn winter season because it's practical, because it's warm. And furry coats, like teddy coats, anything faux fur, is a trend or an item category in general, which once again, I have worn. I have had many, many faux fur coats over the years and I've tried and experimented with teddy coats as well. They've never really stuck though, to be honest. I always just feel like they're a bit too bulky for me. But this is one trend I feel like I'm just over now. And I can't really tell you what has made me get over it. It's just a natural progression within my style that I just feel like that is no longer a look or those are no longer pieces that I care to invest in. Right, so there we have it guys. Those were five trends. I could have picked so many more, but those were the five most offensive to me. Those were the five on the top of the list that I would not wear. If there are any trends that you are not interested in wearing, perhaps you agree with some of the trends that I've mentioned in this video, or perhaps if you've looked at some of the trend reports, there's others that you just do not fancy. They don't tickle your pickle. But also we don't all have to be negative Nancys. What are the trends that you love for the season ahead as well? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you next time.